And uh, in the spirit of making this an international conference, uh, I was asked to give this talk in English. So it's being recorded, and um, it's uh, it's nice to see how it's uh, the event has grown since last year. So uh, this I feel like this is another step, and hopefully we're going to make this a bigger, and bigger event uh, each year. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. Uh, so today's topic is the introduction of performance counters in HTOP 3.0, which if you go to the website, it's not out there yet, but it's the development branch. So this is what's up and coming in the future versions of HTOP. Um, first, uh, since I'm going to introduce myself here, uh, I am Hisham. Um, I'm from south of Brazil, Rio Grande do Sul. And I'm the original author. I started the HTOP project uh, back in 2004, a long time ago. Uh, in the meantime, I've been uh, involved with free software a lot. As uh, Today, uh, in my day job, I am the lead developer of Lurox, the package manager for the Lua programming language. Uh, back in college, one of my favorite projects uh, is the Global Linux distribution, the craziest Linux distro that you've never heard of. Uh, which I started with my friends, uh, which I'm still running on this machine to this day. And uh, my employer is Kong, uh, the developers of a free and open source uh, API gateway for microservices. By the way, we are hiring, and if you want to do distributed systems, high performance microservice, and Lua, and all those kind of things, come talk to me. Um, so uh, I think the mandatory introduction is, so what is HTOP? Well, if um, hopefully some of you have heard of it. And so it's an interactive process manager, uh, which my original goal was intended to be, quote, unquote, a better top. Because I was a Linux user since college. And the one piece of software that annoyed me the most was top. And uh, if you're coming to Linux today, you'll think, well, top is not that bad, but it used to be. Uh, I'm, I would like to believe that the existence of HTOP like, gave top some competition and made it better over the years. Because by then, when I said a better top, all I meant was I want to see the list of processes, but I would like to scroll the list and be able to see all of the processes. Because as the name says, it only showed you the top processes. Right? That's where the names come from. Like it's only a screen full of processes. Um, sorted like by the top users of CPU or memory or whatever. And so like back in the day, uh, in 2004, like I, I, it was also a way of practicing C programming. And so I did a version of top that actually did scrolling. I was happy and like, and I was okay that the project is done. Uh, I put it online and people started getting interested and sending patches. And I've been maintaining the project ever since. Like uh, you, you put out uh, like a free software project out there in the world, it's like it's kind of like raising a child. Like it's, it's you, you kind of you, you end up responsible for it uh, for a long time. Um, so this is what it looks like. You get like a scrolling list of, of processes. You have columns; they're configurable. You have like nice uh, visual bars of CPU usage. People love to send me screenshots of huge servers with like over a hundred cores and things like that, which I can only look and see like, oh, my software is running there and I'm envy because I don't have those machines. And then, and you can do like nice things like setting the priority and all that, and, but also uh, cool stuff like setting IO priority and other things like that. Uh, in the years since, HTOP has grown beyond running on Linux and the way this happened was very accidental. Uh, so like one random guy from the internet took the sources and made like a hacky Mac version. They just ripped off all of the Linux code and, and replaced it with Mac code. And it worked for them, they put it up on GitHub. And then like for the next few years, I started getting bug reports of bugs in the Mac version. And so like I don't have anything to do with it, like HTOP was already like 2.0 and people were reporting bugs of version 0 0.9, which was the version that had that Mac fork. Uh, eventually I was, I was I was doing my PhD at the time, and I was like a broke student. I did like a crowdfunding project. I like said, okay, let's, let's make HTOP port properly portable. 
So I wrote the platform abstraction layer, and once that was done, I started getting contributions from uh, users of other operating systems. So now we have proper Mac support and FreeBSD support, OpenBSD support, Dragonfly. Like last year, a guy added support for Solaris, or rather Illumos, which is the free software, like the current version of that. And, and it's really interesting like, to see, like having, uh, having been like essentially a, a, a Linux, exclusive Linux user and developer for like most of my professional career, having your software running on other operating systems has some, some fun effects. Like, like the day when Apple released a broken kernel, which meant that HTOP could like by itself halt the entire system. Because every time you requested uh, data about the running threads, it would like allocate something and fail. And it kept allocating, allocated, and made the kernel run out of memory, and it crashed the kernel. So there was this uh, High Sierra release of, of, of Mac OS, in which if you opened HTOP and let, and let it run for like 30 seconds, you can hang the system. And when that happened, like I had like 247 messages in one bug report of like on my GitHub, like something that had never happened in like over 10 years of developers. Then, then, then you realize that users are going crazy with that. Eventually, that. eventually Apple fixed that and also a Mac user sent like a version check that like checked for that specific buggy version and just tried not to read the thread info. And, uh, and things keep happening like this has just arrived like this week, uh, in which I learned that there's actually people running AIX, like in this day and age. And not only that, like developing an HTOP port for it. Uh, I foresee a long code review pr process for that PR because it's full of if defs for all the crazy stuff that AIX has slash doesn't have. Uh, but yeah, that's the, the, that's the life of being the maintainer of a project like that. Uh, st st still, uh, HTOP's heart belongs to Linux because uh, that's the platform that I run on, that's the platform that I develop it for. And for the rest of this talk, we're gonna talk about Linux only, like specific features that are coming from the next versions of HTOP because that's why uh, I run. And essentially, the, all of the other ports rely on contributions from the community. So it's essentially like a best effort availability. And like I ensure Linux support and then the community to the best of its ability like keeps, keeps it running on every other like Unix out there. So one thing that was uh, an important design aspect of adding the cross-platform layer was that I didn't want it to be the lowest common denominator because some, some pieces of software some that are portable, they, like, they guarantee the same behavior everywhere. So like this is like one way of interpreting like this supportable piece of software, but not in the case of HTOP because essentially the the general like shell of it is the same like the essentially like the the UI aspects are the same, but then the actual metrics are specific to each uh, OS. Like in general, of course they have like CPU, memory, process name, PID, and all that. And even PID has some surprises because. In some OSs, like each thread gets its own PID, and others it doesn't. And I use that, and I use PID for sorting when I do the tree view. And then the tree view didn't work in some OSs because of that. And then they wanted some changes, but we try to keep it uh, like that. And a nice thing about like conference-oriented programming is that you go to conferences, you watch talks, and you get inspired. And like last year, I was uh, I watched like Acme's uh, talk on Perf. And, and, even, and I, I even asked like a kind of question, like of all those fun like perf metrics, like which one do you think would be like the ones that most, would be like most interested, interesting to get to a wider audience? Like I remember that was like my question, like the, it was a very like self-interested question because it was like, okay, so which of those metrics can I steal and put into HTOP? Uh, so last, last year, this gave me ideas, and this is like one year later, here we are, and, and those metrics are that's what I'm gonna talk about. So uh, a brief history of metrics in HTOP. So when I first started it, I, I really just wanted it to be like a top that scrolled. So I started with a default set of metrics and the exact same columns that you got when you first open top and you don't configure anything. And I, over the years, I learned that most people don't really go beyond the default settings, right? They just use HTOP as it comes. 
Like even though it, it has like the fun setup screen because one of the things that I, I didn't want people to have to learn to edit a config file format in order to, to customize it. So if you press like F2, you can go to a, to a nice screen in which you can like visually select whatever you want. But I realized that a lot of people don't even know that HTOP can show process in a tree view even, if, even though you have the bar in the bottom with like F1, F2, F3, F4, saying like F5, go to tree view. And yeah, but indeed, HTOP has a lot more. So if you hit like F2 or like uppercase C, because I think that was like the config option for top, uh, you can go and play around. So you go to columns here. It shows you the active columns you get, and it shows you a big list of available columns which is like a lot more than the ones that you have here. Like this scrolls further down and you get a lot more. Uh, so one of the things that I added over the years that went beyond the default set of top was IO metrics. And those were inspired by IO top, which was another piece of software that was like really cool and I've, and every time like I read or heard people talking about HTOP, they would talk about IO top as well. They say like, oh, HTOP is cool, but also ch check out IO top. And, so I added those like four columns, which essentially replicate the UI experience that you get from uh, uh, IOTOP, except with scrolling. Uh, and in fact, these have been available for years, right? But I realized that it didn't like people didn't actually use it because, it, and it was more of a UI UX experience. Like, okay, extra columns are there, but if you if you keep like stuffing features in and adding more columns, eventually you're gonna have to like scroll sideways and you can't read the process names anymore. And like it, it's, it's kind of worthless if you have like, you know, a bazillion uh, metrics and you put them all like side to side and you overwhelm the user like yourself with information. Like people want to have like a, a summary view of, of things. So essentially those have been available for years, but I haven't seen people using them, like not even myself at times. But here they are. Like if you if you take off the other columns and put this, essentially you get like a nice IO top like uh, metrics, like IO top, IO metrics viewer. Uh, another nice contribution that came like uh, that arrived uh, like a year ago or around that, uh, submitted by uh, Andre Carvalho, developer from Rio. Uh, was adding a delay accounting. He was inspired by Brendan Gregg's work on. Uh, again, like popularizing uh, those kinds of metrics because he writes about it and he tells people how to use it and how to get those metrics and the importance of them. So uh, he was like evangelizing about uh, the value of knowing like delay accounting, like how much percent of the time like is your CPU like uh, how much uh, the percentage of time that your process was actually like ready to run with like for, for CPU but was waiting on CPU, right? It, ha it, it has like a workload to compute but but it didn't have a CPU ready for it, or it was like hanging because of delay, for of because of I/O, or because of swap. So you see, like, okay, so if I had like more CPU available, then this delay would go down, and I would, you know, get more computation done. Or if I had more I/O bandwidth, this I/O delay would have gone down. So it's it's a good way to see like what the bottlenecks of of your running system are. So it's and it's kind of it summarizes it nicely in one number that 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 you can see. So he added columns for that and. It, uh, it's done over Netlink, uh, unlike the rest of uh, the general HTOP metrics, which the same way as TOP does, essentially parses the slash proc uh, file system tree. So this, this was like the first one that uses Netlink, and uh, uh, I, was talking to, I was talking to Arnaldo about, uh, about that. Like the, the other OSs, like some of the ports, the BSD ports, they use like they talk to uh, the kernel via syscalls to get the process information. Uh, the, the Linux version doesn't, it just reads the files from proc. So this is something that might change in the future for performance reasons, but really performance is never like, performance for HTOP has been like reasonable over the years. I usually take like top as a baseline and whether people complain. Uh, people haven't complained really, so I never like optimized that part. But yeah, so this was added again, and it was like also interesting, and also like it was really nice to see people got around to use it. But yeah, how do we get people to use more stuff? And then we got to last year's idea, which is some very cool metrics that we have available nowadays that we didn't even have available back in 2004 when I, uh, when I started HTOP to the best of my knowledge, because uh, uh, those, uh, the, the, the level of detail that how do the performance counters in modern processors give you you know, nowadays uh, has been improving a lot. So nowadays what you can get, and uh, 
again, as you saw in this morning's talk, uh, and all those keynotes, uh, was you can get low overhead performance metrics that are managed by the Linux kernel, and they are available in user space using perf tools. And so here's the idea. Let's get some of those metrics and let's put it on HTOP so we can get like a nice UI and people can learn about them. So how do performance counters work? Like what was the approach that I took for implementing them into HTOP? Uh, I based my work on, on, on another, like that's the value of free software, like I didn't have to start from scratch. Uh, there was this research project from the researchers from INRIA in France, like Ervin and Antoine. So they wrote their own like top-like program called TipTop. And they focus a lot of their research on hardware performance counters. They have like an academic paper on it. And so they did like the bare minimum in terms of UI, like programming, and they were focused on uh, getting the raw data. So they developed like a full like XML based language in which you can write expressions and, and combine the counters and do calculations with them and produce like metrics and all sorts of complicated stuff. Uh, but essentially, uh, to get to the numbers, what uh, it does is uh, you perform a syscall to request a counter. The syscall returns you a file descriptor, which then you can periodically read and display the numbers. But I soon realized, like by playing around with TipTop and seeing it occasionally fail, and when I implemented it myself on uh, HTOP, uh, was that I was aware that uh, the file descriptors were like a limited resource, but the file descriptors and the performance counters are a limited resource. So you might not be able to get like, oh, I want to get like, you know, uh, that, will, that will be a nice time for that meme, like all the things, you know, like count all the things, you know, I want to get all of the available columns for all of the available processes all the time. Like you're likely not going to get that, right? So, uh, but we have in HTOP like nice UI measures for filtering this. So, again, like uh, aiming to get like a nice user experience, like I, I focused on, okay, so what would be like useful, useful uh, performance counters to give like as a default set, like instead of the full XML uh, configuration language that the, the person has to learn about and, and in order to be able to use TipTop. So essentially, again, like uh, I try to uh, follow someone else's wisdom and so I took the counters that TipTop provided as their default set and implemented those like hard-coded into HTOP. So these are the counters that you get. You get instructions per cycle, which is a very nice measurement. Like, okay, so you got, uh, because usually like you write a program and you're saying like, oh, you're getting like 100% CPU usage, right? And you're happy because your computation is going like full throttle, full speed and uh, but then you realize that, well, but I have a superscalar processor that has like a pipeline and can actually execute like four or like eight instructions like in a single cycle. And the way I develop, uh, the way I wrote this algorithm, you're only like running two. So you're actually keeping the CPU busy, but it's not really busy because the pipeline is not full at all times. And there are ways that you can like uh, rearrange uh, your code so that you're actually like filling the, the pipeline more. more. So. You can, so looking at like 100% CPU usage is not enough, like you have to like, uh, ideally you have to know what's the ideal IPC your processor can do is, and then you can compare, compare to the number that you're getting. Uh, also you get some raw numbers in terms of like millions of cycles, millions of instructions, and then we get to understanding the cache, which uh, you know, in the current day and age is also like a very hot topic. And so you get some metrics on that uh, in terms of cache misses. So you can see sometimes you can get like hugely different numbers on the way you lay out your data so that you use your cache more efficiently. Uh, it, it goes down even to like the, the order you put your things and your structs in your C program and you can get like uh, hugely different cache behaviors. And looking at those metrics, you can see if the, the twiddling that you're doing in your code is, is really making the difference. Uh, branch mispredictions, and also some metrics about uh, reads, writes, and misses of the L1 data cache. So again, then, uh, in the end, talking to the kernel and doing like the low-level programming part is all fun and games, but to get a usable program, uh, like the, the user experience matters a lot. So. To make the larger number of metrics usable, like the next step was 
adding support for multiple screens. So like I, I called it screens in the implementation. So I'll just call it tabs. Uh, so now the new version of HTOP in the next, the, the branch is called next. You have master with the, the 2.x version and the next branches where all of this is currently. Um, you can have multiple screens and when you press tab, you get a different set of metrics. So this is gonna be like the next major release because adding all support for all of this required a larger change uh, in f into the format of htoprc. So now it's demo time. So let's get to a terminal and take a look at this. Oh, how I'm gonna type with one hand is hard. Give me a sec. So this is called. So this is what the current like uh, work in progress version of HTOP looks like, and it's usually like if you're a HTOP user, it looks essentially like the uh, HTOP you know and hopefully love, uh, with the addition of those fun tabs in here. So now the the default view is the main tab, and if I press the tab key, I'm gonna switch to the next one. So now I have the I/O metrics which is essentially that IO top, now it's like one key away, right? It's not like you have to reconfigure all of your like HTOP configuration, blah, blah, blah. And then we get as well and, and to play with, like we, we can even like exercise it a bit. Let's see, if, let's see if we can get something happen here because the machine is idle, so it's not a fun demo. Oh yeah, now things are happening because uh, because I wanted to run the entire disk. I ran with sudo, and then my regular user didn't have the permissions to get the I/O stats uh, for that. So I just ran HTOP with sudo as well to see what my sudo find was doing. And so now I see here the like the disk write. Of course, it's not writing anything. It's reading a lot. And here is the combined read disk write uh, stat, which is good for sorting, right? Uh, yeah, the, the combined disk reads and writes. And it's interesting, one thing we're gonna see here, if I control C and try it again, what's gonna happen? You can actually use the mouse as well to click there. And uh, do I have the permissions? Yeah, I do, right? Uh, but I'm not seeing anything. Yes, I do have the permissions. Yet nothing's happening, and now it started to happen, right? Because the first part of the traversal, everything was in cache, so it was like idle, zeroing, right? And then, like, if you keep running low for 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 longer, then then you see it's actually doing disk uh, accessing. You see, I have to have the permissions, I'm running the thing again, but now everything's in cache. And the other thing that you saw is that the memory there, uh, the blue and the yellow parts, they have grown. Because those are like buff the kernel buffers and the disk cache. So, uh, uh, I don't remember by heart now, but there's like a, an endpoint in the sys file system if we echo to it and say like drop caches, we can reset the kernel cache and then run this again and then we're gonna see like the, the IO uh, the IO effect uh, again.
So you now all the blue section of the memory bar has gone down again. And that means like the caches were dropped and, and we're, we're going to start hitting the, I'm going to start hitting IO again. So um, moving on, we get to the perf counters, which are the title of the talk. So here we see stuff happening. And we get the CPU there, uh, the number of the active C current CPU, millions of cycles, millions of instructions, the IPC that I talked about, the percentage of uh, misses, and the percentage of branch mispredictions. And when I go uh, idle here, uh, what is running on my machine? Like I get I stop itself running, and I get awesome, which is the window manager. So this is uh, this is the, the activity that I'm getting. Like. And apparently, the, my terminal is getting like lots of mispredictions. We can, again, we can just click here and sort and get all sorts of sort of data about this. And then, running as a regular user, I'm only going to get uh, metrics about my own processes because I don't have permissions to uh, look at those metrics from the other ones. So. It's kind of, uh, it's gray here, so it's hard to see, but like for the pr process owned by root, you get like NA for not available. And this, uh, this is a practical way of limiting as well the number of file descriptors and performance counters that you need, since uh, if, like in the regular HTOP use, you're gonna be looking at your, your own processes. And uh, if we go to the, and then finally we have like the, the L1 cache stats. And again, like uh, with a mostly idle machine, like at like HTOP, the terminal, the window manager, and Compton, which is the compositor for uh, for the fun transparency effects. So this is what actually like running on the machine, and you get like you get more detailed numbers on on things that you would then you would get like from the CPU metric because the machine is like mostly idle, and you get all those uninteresting like 1.1 percent, 0.7 percent. Like if you know if you if you stuck to the basic uh, views that we always used on HTOP, like all, all this time, like you don't, you don't really get much information about the CPU activity at all, right? Everything's like we, like we can sort by CPU here, like and this is what you get, like 0 0.7, 0, and you know everything is kind of uninteresting. And then you go here, you know, and you see there's like a world of activity happening, you know, even in this uh, apparently like idle machine. Right. Um, the availability of your uh, hardware counters depends on like this is even like processor model specific. Uh, I was trying to figure out uh, why do I get L1 cache reads and misses and writes but not write misses from this machine. I haven't actually even tested this code on other machines to see if like maybe it's just like this mobile processor model that doesn't have it or something like that, but tip top doesn't show this, met like it fails to show this column as well, so maybe there's something going on in there. And, but if we run as root and we try to get like all of the metrics all the time, we even hit, we, we, we may even hit those limitations. Like, let's see, like, yeah, for, since, since this machine is very lightly loaded now, and this is like all of the processes that I have, um, it, it's actually succeeding at getting performance counters for all of the threads and processes, but if I had like lots of threads going on, like you, you know, usually like day of work, and I have like I open like Firefox here with like you know it's going to open like 50 threads, and then another like Java and those kinds of things, then I'm going to get like hundreds and hundreds of processes. You're going to hit a limit. So uh, HTOP tries to do the smart thing and just actually measure the things that are on screen. Uh, so that like if you apply a filter to say, oh, I just want to see processes whose name starts with like Nginx. It's, on, it's only going to be counting the Nginx processes, so you're going to get the counters for those. And finally, all of this is user configurable. If you go to the setup screen, now we have a new page here, which is screens, in which you get a list of screens, which are your tabs, and each of them has a list of active columns. 
And here's the list of available columns, which are like way more than the original. And everything's user configurable. If you look at the uh, down there below, I press like F5, and I create can create a new one. And, s and for example, I can do this. I created a new a new page there for like page faults with like minor faults, major faults, children minor faults, children major faults. If I go back here and now I've got a new tab here. You know, with all of those page fault counters. You know, and this and, and these are like the page faults that that, that I got from my process. All right. So uh, so hopefully this is gonna open like uh, as I was was telling someone else uh, earlier, uh, uh, hopefully now once the final version is released, uh, we're gonna see like more demand for new counters, more contributions of new counters, and it's gonna be nice and easy like to add more stuff into the HTOP interface and make all those metrics usable and accessible. And of course, if you don't like any of this stuff, you wanna go back to the main screen and you go to setup, and you go to display options and say, I don't wanna show the tabs, and then you're done, and the HTOP is back to exactly what it was, except that if you press tab, you can still switch screens. And so these are like screenshots in case my demo failed from some catastrophic reasons like this machine wouldn't run. So coming to a wrap in terms of availability, well, the IO metrics and delay accounting are actually available like since HTOP 2.1, so it's already out there like in packages for like all of the major distros. For the performance counters and the support for the multiple screens, the way you saw today, I've got on GitHub HTOP 3.0 beta 5, just tagged like yesterday. So uh, it's a version there. So far, all of this performance counter stuff is Linux only. So if you're a fan of any other OS that has this uh, capability, patches are, of course, more than welcome. And uh, thank you. Uh, how are we on time? Do you have time for questions uh, in English or in Portuguese? Alguma pergunta? Uh, yes, all of the performance counters support that's available here is uh, x86 only, I believe, because uh, I've got the the... There's, a, there, there's a, the table with the, the numbers that you ask for the syscall, and I got the table, the x86 table from TipTop, and that's, and, and that's what I use there. But uh, I think in, in, in general, Linux has support for more. Now, it might even be running already in the other ones. There you go. There you go. These are the ones that I'm using. And uh, yeah, I remember seeing like some, some of those numbers were if duff in the tip top source code. 
And but I, I saw apparently I just stuck to the portable subset. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Alguma outra pergunta? Well, uh, if not, then thank you once again. Thanks.